Got that long day behind you. Good times lie ahead. With company worth keeping, that'll bash a smile on your head. Come on in, the doors open. You'll find just the finest folks here. Pull up a chair, grab a drink, and let our stories your ear. Cause we're the talk, talk, talk the tavern. Here you're always welcome. The talk, talk, talk the tavern. Promising beer and bed love. The talk, talk. The tavern, music, medicine, then some. The talk, talk, talk. The tavern, the song's over. Here we come. There you go. Welcome to Talk of the Tavern. Uh, tonight's topic is going to be movie theater features, home versus professional. Um, we're going to talk about that in a couple minutes. But first, <clears throat> want to let everybody know we are an adult channel, an adult show with adult language and topics. And we're going to say naughty words and possibly even imbibe alcohol and tobacco products. So there's your... Uh... Also, want to let everybody know we are recording in front of a live chat audience the podcast that will be posted later in the week. So if anybody listening to podcast hears us talking to people interacting and this bell sound usually means that I want to uh, read off some chat comments and interrupt the flow of the conversation between the three of us. Other than that, uh, for those of you listening in chat, understand we are recording a podcast, so we might not get to every single comment that flows across the screen. Other than that, I do want to let everybody know we do have merch just below the screen. You can click on the merch button, or you can do exclamation point merch, and find that here, and we have awesome shirts that I have bought one of each, and I wear them to work to people's amusement as well as stickers that I put on my computer to advertise the shows and spread the love. <clears throat> on that, don't forget we do have our other podcasts, Right Night and uh, Stealing for Survival. You can find those on all the big ones online, including Spotify and iHeartRadio, as well as others. Check us out. We're home on Spreaker, but we're all over the place. Okay, that's enough pimping of this stuff. So tonight's topic with the movie theater features or movie theater experience might be a better turn of phrase for it. Basically, movies have been... Going to the theater before movies even existed was an experience. And you had different levels of theater from the fancy and ritzy all the way down to what somebody would take the whole family to. We still have that. But now it's changing again. Once moving pictures came in, let alone talkies... It shifted how we went to the theater. And now, with our home theaters, <coughs> streaming of movies, purchasing of you know, 4K, Blu-ray, etc., it has changed our movie experience. And this is what we're going to talk about. Aaron, do you have some opening thoughts on this? Yep. Uh, theaters have priced me out. TVs have dropped in price. Uh, I am more than willing to wait to watch a movie on my TV rather than drive to Woodbridge uh, to see the same thing. Uh, it's just one of those, why am I going to spend 20 bucks a, a head, um, not including drinks or whatnot, to potentially see a bad movie? Um, it, things like Rotten Tomatoes have just made me go, ah, you know what, I'll wait. I'll just freaking wait. Um, with the exception of the Marvel movies, I don't go out there to see them anymore because I don't need to. Uh, whereas some things, I do like to have that audience feel, um, but it, I haven't really experienced that since friggin' uh, Endgame. That's what right. I got. Okay. And don't forget, we give each person a chance to talk here. Let us know when you're done. So mm -hmm. we can pass it on to the next one. Um, Andrea, any thoughts on what he just said before we pass it over to you? Before you pass it over to me? Uh-huh. Before we ask you your opinions on the topic, do you yeah, want to yeah. respond to anything he said? It's just like your other favorite podcast that you like to listen to. The scary one that you like. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Scary yeah, I, I, I can do it in the discussion part. 
What's that mean? Like I'll wait until we discuss for me to give you my thoughts on all. Do you of want this to discuss stuff. anything he just said? Well, yeah. Um, see, I was all prepared and then you messed me up with all that. Okay, so I agree with you. Sometimes you do want the experience of going out, and that's what you're paying for. You're not paying for, you know, the movie and things. You're you're paying for the experience to have the surround sound and sit with other people and enjoy this thing at the same time with bad popcorn and yucky soda. It's very similar to what Witch's Door and Chat says. With everything going on, I'd rather watch at home. By the way, for anybody listening to this 10 or 20 years down the road, it is uh, October 2020, and we're dealing with COVID. So when she says, with everything going on, I'd rather watch at home. Plus, with a good surround sound, it's better at home. I don't have to deal with overpriced popcorn. I don't have to fight the crowds. I don't have to worry about missing the movie when I have to use the bathroom. And I can pause it to get more soda and stuff. Okay, with that, what are your thoughts on the topic in general, Andrea? Well, I know we're going to be talking about home theater versus theater theater, but I would also like to throw in drive-in theater. What are your thoughts so, on that? Um, well, it, it's kind of a, a lost a, a lost art, and, and they're not around very much, but I think with everything going on, the COVID and the social distancing, distancing for theaters to keep in business who knows they may pop up again because you got that social distance but you have the audience and you have the movie and you have that movie experience just a thought okay are you done mm -hmm. yeah just a thought that was just my thought okay erin any thoughts on her stuff uh, the big thing with driving theaters, driving theaters are a great experience and all that. Um, you're kind of splitting the difference between there, but I think that's just going to be a, that's a business thing because they take up so much damn space, um, which is a premium. Uh, so, yeah, I'd love to see that kind of thing come back, um, but you got limited presentation time, so it's got to be dark out. Um, mm -hmm. You got one screen that's serving half as many people as a regular screen that's much bigger. It just, I, they've kind of optimized away from that. Whereas before, theaters were smaller, so the screen was bigger and you ha it actually served more people. Well, and, and not just driving with cars. I know there's some places, some venues, that will put up a screen like a beach and they'll do it during summertime. So you can have a lot of people like you would in a theater, but it's still open air and things like that. So a drive-in doesn't actually have to be a drive-in. It could be, no, I... you know. Okay. Now my thoughts on the topic itself is, uh, everything you guys just said covered a lot of really good stuff there. And I definitely agree with all that. But in defense of going out to the movie theater, as Aaron kind of indicated, there are certain films that you want to see on a bigger screen. Whether it's for the special effects or the crowd effect uh, of being in a mass of people enjoying the same thing at the same time, there is a value to that. But it's one of those things, going out to the theater, even a movie theater, not even a live theater now, you want to make it special. You want to make it an experience. And a lot of theaters are kind of branching out towards this, making sure they have, if they're going to charge you 12 to $15 per person to walk through the door, then you want comfortable seats. You want great sound. You want spectacular visuals. And also, everything before you walk into that theater, you want it to feel a little special also. One of Andre and my favorite places to go, besides the drive-in theater, is a place that has a full restaurant, a bowling alley, and uh, an upstairs private room for anybody. You've got to be 20 or one or older to go into it because they serve full alcohol. And you can go out onto the balcony afterwards. By the way, Aaron, this is in Fredericksburg, behind uh, Spotsylvania Mall. Um, but all I'm going to say is if you're going to go out and spend, as Aaron mentioned, you know, however much just to get in, not to mention what it's going to cost to get a bucket of popcorn and a drink and a snack. You're looking at $50 minimum for two people. 
than make it special. Here's something else I'd say. With the home theater, yeah, we have some beautiful home theaters, but also I recommend making it special. Create a ritual around it. So when you're going to watch a movie you really want to watch, it's not just another movie in the living room. Take the time to pop that popcorn and have that pizza ready so you don't have to get up in the middle of it. Sure, you can pause if you got to get to the bathroom, but creating that special atmosphere in your own house so the movie has more than just another movie feel to it is important. And if we're going to lose these things of going out and enjoying these things, then let's make it special at home. And drive-in theaters to touch on that real quick. Um, they're out there, and they're now also digital, etc. So, oh, oh, actually, Wordwin just mentioned it here. We also have the dinner theaters, but not the live dinner theater, the one where you actually have tables and can get food and whatnot. That also helps make it something different because it is literally dinner and a movie. And That's one we're looking to do soon because it's like a 1940s um, setup. And, you know, of course, we have costumes for that. Mm. We have outfits. We don't have costumes. They're just regular clothing. Yeah. I don't put on my Batman mask for that one. That's only for <laughs> the after dinner show. <laughs> it's, uh... Any comments on uh, the stuff I said there before we get into the random conversation? Well, I'm... Uh, John Travolta had a book out, and he was talking about the golden age of flying and things like that. Uh, his first flight, he's been infatuated with planes forever. And he talks about the first time his mom saved up to do just a quick jaunt so that he could fly, and everybody got dressed up and all that. Um, and theaters have kind of gone the way of the, oh, you know what, uh, sweatpants and friggin' yo yoga pants to go in there. And it's just you mean another the same thing. way as courthouses and church has gone. Yes. Not that I go to either one, but <laughs> <laughs> hold on a second. There has been <laughs> a redemption on screen of uh, Flash. My I have one. Oh, there you go. She's got one. There's Google Gary. He's back there sleeping. And I've got Mister Bitey Otter right here for everybody. There he, he was sleeping right next to me, so I'll bring him on screen for a minute, as long as he'll allow it. So, uh, yeah, pack him in, get high turnover, Wordwin says. That is the philosophy of movie theaters, churches, and courts. So, okay, let's set that guy down. Thank you, Gary. Here's to you, man. Good to see you. So, well, go ahead, Andrea. I was going to say, you know, all right, the, a lot of people complain that the ticket price for movie theaters is so much, but... It has to be that way because they got to pay for the building, the electricity, the, plus the rights to the movie, which is so much money well, depending that, on the movie. That's really the issue. It's the rights to the movie. Yeah. Right. And they have to pay for the employees and, and, and all that stuff to make this environment. So it is worth it if you break it down like that. You know, and let me point out this. From a business aspect, and Aaron might be able to build on this, Look how much it costs to put in a good sound system, surround sound in your living room. Sure, uh, 150 to a thousand dollars. I mean, you can go up crazy, but let's just say that much. Now let's look at what it would cost to put in a movie theater system, and everybody wants the best movie theater with the beautiful seats that they're just going to spill their damn drink on and dump popcorn on and have kids putting boogers all over. And they don't care because it's not theirs, and that's right. the problem. But they want this beautiful theater, and they don't want to pay more than $7 for a ticket. Look, guys, maybe you're fucking worth $15. You go spend $9 on a goddamn combo meal at fast food. How about making it worth taking yourself out? Even out back or Applebee's, you're going to spend $30 to $50 for a dinner for two. Maybe that theater is something in addition. Make it special. Treat yourself. Um, <laughs> I want to say I the agree theater with... aspect, the movie has to be worth it. Right. That's right. Oh, yeah. How many how many movies a year are really worth the cost of admission? 
See, I mean, granted, it's 2020, so... Uh, but last year, how many were you willing to pay the price to get in there for? I have friends the who... Few go... What, Andrea? As I was gonna say, the few I went to, I was willing to pay the price, but it wasn't very many. Right. I have friends that go to a new movie every week, and I'm like, how do you even find fucking something to watch? Um, once a month. I might be able to do it once a month, but like you, Eric, there's a few movies I want to see in a theater. My superhero movies, I love to see on the big screen. Um, my Star Wars movies, I like to see on the big screen. And there are a couple others now and then, but usually like when True Grit, the remake of True Grit came out, I wanted a theater experience for that, for the wide, expansive, mm -hmm. you know, vistas and everything. Couple comments here. Wordwin says, another reason I avoid theaters is so I can do volume normalization at home. Movie Movies range from a whisper to ear splitting in volume. Sonny says, the money is worth spending when going to see a movie, especially when the theaters work hard to keep things looking good. I agree with Sonny. And as for Wordwin, Andrea and I, she loves to be able to pause it to talk shit without moving, losing part of the movie. I have to have commentary, and that's why I like the drive-in, too, because I can say stuff and I interrupt, but I have to. Can we take a I moment to. to talk about drive-in theaters? <clears throat> um, oh, sure. If you guys can Google one in your local area, go experience it. If you haven't experienced it in 30 years since you were a kid, go experience it again. Um, it is a classic piece of Americana and if it's a nice one, which the one we have here, which is, we're in the Richmond area. It is just west of Richmond in a place called Goochland. Um, well worth going. And you see people before the movie as the sun is setting. They're throwing a football or they're playing tetherball. They're, they do have a picnic area. They have a smoking area. Can't smoke in your car anymore. But you can go over to the little smoking corral and have a cigarette with the other smokers. I like to smoke a pipe there and watch people stare at me. Or you can't cigar. smoke in your car? No, because people were fucking littering cigarette butts everywhere, and other people were complaining about smoke wafting into their open windows. Which um, I understand. Now they have a corral right. where you could still see the movie and hear the movie. Yeah, they have so speakers right there. Just like they put speakers into the bathrooms. The bathrooms are always clean. Nothing at the snack bar except for a few gluten-free items are above $3.75. They are playing... Mm -hmm old movies now, second run movies because there are no new movies coming out that they can get on the screen so we're getting like they have a double feature of Hocus Pocus and Lost Boys this weekend this past oh, weekend I like and that's kind of like awesome and fun My point well is, and they'll do things like we went we took the whole family, it was like an 80's night so they had the Goonies and Ferris Bueller's Day Off which you have to see that on the big screen in the driver theater. That was great. So. Yeah, it's, uh, that's definitely, it's worth the experience just to go and experience a drive-in movie. Especially if it's any yeah. kind of decent, clean place. Well, even if you've seen the movie, it's the experience. You don't have to see the biggest, latest movie. No, no. It's, uh, it is the experience that I'm, matter of fact, if you're looking to enjoy a movie, I'd almost recommend go watch a second run, something you've already seen at the drive-in theater, because I have found I lose 10% of the movie at a drive-in theater, just because there's so much other stuff. I don't get caught up the way I would in a regular movie theater or at home. So, uh, Aaron, have you been to Goochland? No, I have not. Well, we get to a point where we can go again. Uh, we'll make sure we ding you guys in case you decide you want to come out. It's really worth it, and it's worth getting together. No, no. Friends. Emmy brought it up earlier today. It's just one of those time. Right. Uh, it's one yeah. of those I got to spend an hour to get down there, and then make sure that the movies are ones that I actually want to see and all that stuff. Well, sometimes in the summertime, you, they'll even do triple features. Oh no, no, no! That's not in the summertime. I'm sorry, or maybe it is in summer. There's times yeah. they'll do triple features. <laughs> It's like $8, and you get three movies, and you can sit in the car, and you can take off your shoes. That's why I like it. Okay. No, I, and, yeah, not opposed to it. It's just one of those. Yeah, time. It has to be, con there. there's a level of convenience that has to exist. 
Well, um, here's what I'll say, Aaron. We have hit a point in our life, I kind of all three of us, where we're working a little extra hard so we could chill out and relax a few years down the road. So when there gets a point in time where you are more demanding of your off work time than allowing to your work time to prioritize, there'll be things then. We'll look at it then. And oh, yeah. cause, cause I get what you're saying. And right now, you know, with where I am in my life, other things take priority over going to a drive in theater, but back to the topic, let's talk a little bit about home theaters. Um, first of all, best time in the world to be poor. What's that? It's the best time in the world, uh, best time in the universe to be poor right now. Uh, you can get a 55-inch TV for less than 300 bucks. We yeah. were just talking about that yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, there is that, and also a reasonable sound system is going to be about $200. So what I'm hearing here... Modern ahead. TVs actually have pretty decent sound systems. You don't. It's not as good as another one. But it's not as bad as it used to be. Correct. Mm. Correct. Yeah, it's, uh, but all my TVs are like 10 years old. Which they still look new to me, but, you know, <laughs> Wordowin says we have a different definition of poor. Um, I think by poor Wordowin, Aaron is basically meaning, uh, Aaron, what is the government, def is it below like $32,000 a year? Median income for a single person is like twenty eight, but okay. poverty level is like twelve grand. Right. Um, if you're watching this, you're not at the poverty level. You either have a phone or you have a computer. <laughs> um, and uh, and if you've got a computer or a phone, those are three hundred dollar devices. Minimum, <laughs> yeah, minimum, for a crappy one. Either way. Right. And why are phones uh, our more definition than computers? God damn it the fuck yeah uh, our definition of poor has changed dramatically um oh, yeah. from the 1980s i'm gonna move us oh, yeah. back on the movies yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna move but us the back. fact that we can go see a movie in the theaters right that cost 20 bucks a person but here at home if you have 500 dollars, you can have a kick-ass home theater now, if you're smart and you get some heavy curtains to drop over your windows and part of your walls to help buffer that sound, it's even better. My goal is to have a room that I would call the media room, which I've had one of these before. But I want to create a surround sound. I want to put comfortable chairs in there and have a large TV. Basically make a private movie theater that can seat six or eight people. With Andrea in my seat front and center everybody else can sit behind us and i kind of want recliner well um like bill murray's home theater in um zombie land that was pretty nice yeah well a lot of this doesn't have to take a whole lot um i mean it takes money and for me to think i want to spend two to five thousand dollars to do up a room to watch movies apparently there are people out there that buy a new couch every two to three years, and these things cost about $2,500 each. There are people that buy a new mattress that costs 1000 to $1,500 every couple of years. There are people that buy a new fucking car every two years that aren't the cheap-ass fifteen to $20,000 cars that I buy and keep for 10 years. Um, it, it, it's, I, I am definitely, compared to your average Joe, the poor guy. But, uh, yeah, I want that room. I, which, if my son is watching right now, February, your room might become that room. It's hard to say. It's, he hits 18 in February, so at that point in time, if he's not using it, I'm going to make a use for it. So, yeah, and... Pointing out that's also in well, context. I want a cotton candy machine for the theater. Can we that's get a popcorn request. machine too, just to scent the air? How about a microwave? You can just start vaping, popcorn? sir. What's that? You can just start vaping. <laughs> I have vaping well, stuff. I, I mean, it used to be one of those. Ooh, the the fair is in town now. Oh, it's a douchebag with a fucking vape. <laughs> 
I hate the smell of movie theater popcorn. It is disgusting. What about microwave popcorn? I hate the smell of buttered popcorn. Oh. Do you not like the smell of butter? Or fake butter? I like butter, but I don't, it's the pop, buttered popcorn. I just, I don't know. It's just, I don't like. So, Andrea, hmm? I want to talk to you about this. Aaron, yeah, you can oh, fucking God. chime in if you want. But, Andrea, what would you like in a home theater? Uh, volume control. Go on. Because you and you and I both have different volumes. Like I need mine down to one because that's too loud. <laughs> so, like, can I have my own little bubble with yes. my volume control? We can. We can do and a movie sound popcorn. via Bluetooth headset. <laughs> Which, geez, I wonder if anybody does that. Aaron, any idea mm -hmm. Bluetooth headset for home theaters? Oh, yeah. Oh, have Easily TV. done. That'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. What, Andrew? Well, I'm sure they have headphones that connect to your TVs, but why not go out and get that chair that has the speakers in it? You could have the one with the speakers in it, so you could hear all that. Well, also, uh, here's uh, for everybody else that's coming up on 50 or perhaps not as broken as me or more broken than me. Um, I really want hearing aids, and once I get the hearing aids, it'll be a different situation. I'm going to be so bummed out if I go to the, get this hearing test and the doctor is like, nah, your hearing's okay, you don't need hearing aids. I'm going to be like, what? Be like, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you that funnel you can hold up to your ear. There you go. <laughs> can I get the one from The Hobbit that the dwarf had? Or Wild Wild West, yeah. Either one. I, I was going to mention Wild Wild West. <laughs> I just want to pour the fucking liquid out of it. Ooh! <laughs> okay. Uh, Wordwin says any decent wireless high definition headset should do. So I got to spend $130 on a fucking headset. Which, by the way, why have gaming headsets that are wired jumped from $35 to $120? What the hell happened in the past 12 months? God damn it. Oh. I can tell you, because with my job, COVID. when school school went virtual, headsets flew off the shelves. And I'm like, why does why do all these kids need that? Because if there's more than one sibling in the house, they have to have their own. So they jacked up the price because of demand. There you go. See, they were watching out for eggs and bread, but they weren't watching out for goddamn headsets. But yeah, <laughs> COVID, because everybody's staying home and they're they're doing stuff like our show right now so yeah mm -hmm. they've all got headsets and uh okay what about you Aaron? what are you looking for in a home theater i would like a tv uh, tv mounted high enough up on the wall to where i can watch it over my computer screen so you can watch Good it enough sound over your computer over screen? my okay. yep uh, I'm arranged to where we've got the TV. i got two desks that me and the wife sit next to each other because we like hanging out with each other. Crazy um, talk. I know, I know. Uh, there's a couch in front of us. TV's in front of that. Really? Uh, but, yeah. i got to come visit one day. But I like to be able to have the computer up doing whatever. Uh, but I also like to have the TV on in the background. I like to have the noise. Mm. Um, and being able to toss on whatever and be able to watch it without having to go like this. Or if you have porn, like being able this. to toss off. Hmm? Or if you have porn, being able to toss off. Meh. Well, we just put it on the big screen. Right. It's got to toss. Never mind. Carry on. Yeah. It's a long day. No, no, but um, the sound has to be decent. It doesn't have to be stellar or anything like that because the walls of the house aren't that damn good. Uh, if Don't get me wrong. It'd be nice to do a dedicated room, but I'm never going to use it. Um, Another so reason we're gonna... I'd like to have a dedicated room is because I love my living room my where where i entertain guests to not have a tv in it so you actually have to fucking interact instead of watch tv oh so that means the same thing with the bedroom i'm sorry one at a time andrea 
I'm like, then that means you have to have people over. Well, you don't have to. You can get cardboard cutouts. Aaron? I want to do something, Aaron. Uh, well, there's a reason I don't have a TV in my bedroom. It's not the spot that I want it in. See, we have one there because Andrea enjoys falling asleep to TV while saying she's not. But the thing is, um, Bob Ross isn't on Netflix anymore, so that kind of it's true screws up. And also, she loves our couch, and this is what I'll say for movie watching. She loves our couch, and she will sit out there for like eight hours during the day watching it. But at night, when we're like gonna watch a movie together, like thirty minutes later, she's like, "I'm so uncomfortable, I can't sit here." And I'm like, "What the hell just happened?" <laughs> Well, that's probably an off-air discussion, I guess, right? By the way, for anybody that hasn't noticed who's joining us live, one of the benefits of being on twitch.tv slash Travis Tavern Talk is uh, there is a cat just behind Andrea. And if you're lucky, <laughs> oh, yeah, there he goes. Oh, yeah. Mm. Tell us how that asshole tastes. Uh, Wordwin says, my desk is big enough for a TV on the back. But I'd have to lower my monitor. See, this is this is what Aaron was talking about. To they're they're raised to a comfortable eye level, as they should be, and that's why he's saying. <laughs> that's why Aaron is saying raise the TV high enough that you can watch it over top the monitor, on the far wall, without it being an issue, because mm -hmm. he doesn't have the wall directly behind his desk like most people do. He's be, mm -hmm. basically created a a a shield level um, helicarrier control computer panel behind the couch where Sam Jackson would sit to watch the main view screen. He's the guys mm -hmm. behind Captain Kirk on the Enterprise's bridge. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, Wordwin has pointed out, apparently, me sitting on the couch throws off the couch balance and makes it less comfortable for you. No, no, it's just when it gets dark. When it's yeah. dark. Mm -hmm. Couches are more comfortable when it's daylight? Yes. Don't judge me. But I understand the whole computer being able to see over the screen to the TV if you look over here. You see my lovely roll top desk. On top of it is my TV. Sometimes I will put my desk here or my computer here so I can watch TV and work. So I get it. Well, there we go. It's, uh... It also works for Warcraft and I have the big screen so I can see stuff. So for me in a home theater, hold on, I've got cats getting away here. I'm flashing a cat for anybody else that wants to see one. Um, I have a cat that just brought me a stuffed rat. <laughs> Good kid. Cat brought you a stuffed rat. Yep. So, Aww. <laughs> he so announces his presence. What's that? He announces his presence. Oh, good. A presence Aww. with a C or a... Yes. Okay. Well, I wasn't sure if you meant presence like gifts. Okay. So with our home theater versus going out to see theater... We were to build our ultimate home theater with our current budget or without, depending, just clarify. What what would you do? So, Aaron, you would want the ability to be on your computer and watch a movie or sit on the couch in front of you? Exactly. If I decide that, okay, I don't want the distraction, I go sit on the couch and the TV is right there. Or if I want to work on something, but have Phineas and Ferb in the background, I can do that as well. So what is your perfect distance from a TV? Depends on the size of the TV. Right, well, work that into it. Well, I mean, right now we got, I think it's a 55-inch uh, that we picked up a couple, three years back. Um, it is a hair too close at the moment, and it's probably, if you're sitting on the couch... It's probably about seven feet. Yeah, that is a bit close. You want more like 12 feet there, don't you? I don't have 12 feet in this room. I, I, 
I, I'm working yeah, yeah, no, hypothetically I'm just here, man. I'm not yeah, just yeah, yeah, like yeah, working yeah. with your room. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, as of right now, I'm probably about 10 feet and change from said TV. Um, I mean, I could push back farther, but it just doesn't work. Right. Yeah. Uh, in my old house, it was much closer to those ratios. Uh, but it's just, it, it, you work with what you got. You got the realities of the thing. So it's one of those, ah, I've got the thing here. If I want to watch a movie, I can. I tossed on friggin' Scoob this last weekend. It was great. Loved it. Uh, now, who who did Blue Falcon again? Uh, Mark Wahlberg. That's right. Yep, That's... and Ken Jong was uh, Wonder Mutt or Dino Mutt. I think uh, <clears throat> that almost makes me want to just go buy it. Of course. What? I said, of course. <clears throat> what, of course? Mark and Mark's in it. Of course you want to buy it. Well, also Ken Jeong. You like him. I don't know who that is. Dr. Ken? From Community? No. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he plays Dino Mutt. I like him. And who does uh, Captain Caveman? Uh, that was uh, Tracy Morgan. Really? I know who that is. <laughs> okay, so uh, in a home theater, I, I the reason I'd like a separate room, <coughs> a separate room, and this is why I encourage people to either a wait till their kids are grown and turn their room into a private theater. Or B, stop breeding. Uh, just one of the many reasons I encourage people to stop breeding. <clears throat> um, straight up from straight, you know, we're overpopulating way to have a private theater. Um, so much more money when there's not kids. Um, you yes, Andrea? I would like to have a backyard theater. Tell me They've got some that. really cool TVs. Well... Maybe not a TV, but like a, a screen that pulls down because we have that deck out there. And then when I put all my garden back there, it'd be a garden theater. Um, so have a drop down screen. And you know, we have like the little wireless speakers we could put around and sit outside and watch a movie. See, I wouldn't mind doing a maze. And in order to come see my theater, you've got to make it through the maze. Sounds amazing. Or corny. So, yeah, I'm curious about what kind of maze. Are we talking about, like, a classic Tomb of Horrors Dungeons and Dragons maze? Or are we talking about, like, some corn stalks? Or how about one of those wonderful like mazes? Like a hedge that... mage. You ever been to a hedge maze, Aaron? Yes. Where it's actually only two foot tall and you're so let down that you could just fucking look over it? <laughs> I've, I've been to the ones that are about four and a half feet uh, where you can still kind of see over the top of it but it's one of those oh this doesn't provide me anything I'm not lost this sucks right <laughs> it's not like the shining well even the real <laughs> there's been times I've gone to Ren Fairs and I'm like looking at the map and I'm like alright they've got a maze and you go there and it is literally a maze no Andrea no. It is laid out with gravel poured on the ground. <laughs> yeah. yeah just like, I don't know if I can make it through here. You know what? I'm going to go get my copy of, what was it? Highlander, Highlighter, Highland, whatever it is from the dentist office and do the fucking mazes in the back of that. You know, with Pleasant and Asshole. You know that one comic strip they always had in there with like the nice guy and the asshole kid they, they might have had a different name for it <laughs> I'm thinking they did yeah um, nice guy and douchebag that might have been the title I don't remember Aaron is looking so confused did, did nobody remembers this kids magazine I know the highlighter magazine in the doctor's office highlighter. I know those 
And what was Highlighter, the Beavis yeah. and Butthead? What was the name of the comic strip in there? I don't know. Pleasant and Pleasant. I know the apple was always in the tree. Thank you, Steve Jobs. What? Okay. You know, the back the idea of a backyard theater is actually a great idea. Um, and there's multiple ways to do this. Aaron, you mentioned a TV. Well, okay. So uh, I was at a customer's house one time, and they had freaking done a brick pizza oven, to, a to nice be little clear, setup. Uh, by a customer, Aaron is a male prostitute. He's a jiggler. So uh, I am not a prostitute, sir. I am a hooker. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> prostitute implies legality. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. He he's a hooker. Reasonable rates. Group discount. Okay. So you're they, <laughs> they had a brick oven in their backyard. Brick. They had a brick oven. Friggin' nice little setup. Pool. Uh, they had mounted a TV. They had mounted a waterproof TV uh, in one section so that they could hang out and toss it on there. Wait, waterproof TV? What yes, is this? an indoor outdoor TV. They have waterproof these? TV. Yes. I never heard of that. That's because we're poor. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, we kind of have a pool in our backyard right now with all this rain. <laughs> okay, that's a river. Whatever. <laughs> Aaron, you've it's got a, a lot of blue best, collar sir. abilities. How are you with a backhoe or a ditch witch? Hmm? Uh, someone with... call me the wizard. <laughs> Does this relate to the question I just asked? Or are you just on a tangent? Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I'm decent. Really? I mean, uh, assuming no pigs come through and dig it back up. Not this week. <laughs> we'll see what next year brings, but 2020 is pigless so far. Um... I'm waiting for the llama <laughs> apocalypse. That would be cool. Yeah, llamas on the loose? What color was the dresser? And then the llamas were on the loose. Why were the llamas wearing was it a blue? dress? What a, okay, so you had the llamas on the loose immediately after the uh, the white dress, blue dress issue. I remember the white blessed, uh, white dress, blue dress. Wasn't it also gold colored to some people? It was white and gold or blue and black. That's right. That's right. Okay. So uh, me and Emmy see it differently, but you could have a big screen TV where you can display things like this and go, what color is that? And then just hit people with a rolled up newspaper that is actually a squeaky dog toy. You can do whatever you want, sir. Reasonable no, really, rates. I can't apparently, group discounts. but thank you. Reasonable rates is the key. Reason you said rates with a T, not a P, correct? Whatever. There's a reason there's a disclaimer in the beginning of the show. <laughs> it's a, that's your next late late night TV commercial infomercial. Reasonable what? Anyhow. Um, well, you've heard of The Therapist, right? <laughs> you pay for that one. Okay, so. <laughs> Thank you, Sonny. Um, Aaron, TV. Waterproof, yes. backyard, brick yes. oven, carry on. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They Yes, they, they make waterproof TVs and stuff, indoor, outdoor TVs that you can mount outside so that they don't die immediately after a rainstorm. I have friends like that. That die immediately after a rainstorm? Yeah. They're very sweet. Well, see, I don't know how that TV would work out here because we have a lot of wasps who like to build nests and everything. Whoa, whoa, whoa. White Anglo-Saxon Protestant? <laughs> mm -hmm. And they're nesting. They're really nesting. Yeah, they're everything. nesting. God damn it, why won't they stop breeding? Uh, Irish? Catholic? Oh, okay. With a plus sign in between and it equals... So, um, anyway. Okay, so backyard theaters. You're talking about there's waterproof TVs and you uh -huh. can create this whole patio i love the idea of a drive-in theater in my backyard minus the cars i love this concept of the surround sound when are you going to get rid of those cars in your backyard sir i mean there's like six of them up on blocks that is my fucking neighbor's yard <laughs> oh okay i'm sorry in, in all seriousness for those people that really don't care 
Uh, my neighbor's yard has multiple camper slash RVs, more than one boat, more than one 18-wheeler slash dump truck, and no less from five to seven pickup people. trucks at any time. And dead people. That's not in their front yard. Like, in their backyard is a cemetery. Seriously. Tombstones, everything. So, yeah. Which makes it much more fun when we play Wake the Dead on Halloween with the family. Yay. Oh, by the way, um, Werdewin throws in, uh, could hang a screen in the backyard and do a projector though through a very clean window. This okay. is... Yes. Right. We can't. We have cats. There will be a cat, but like in front of it at all times. Just saying. <laughs> Basking in the light. Um, <laughs> no, there is the whole projector thing, which I think that's what Andrea was originally going for in, in what she was saying there. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, Andrea, in the backyard, again using our imagination and years to make it happen. What are you looking at? Are you looking at putting a screen on the side of the house and having a projector? Are you looking at a TV on no. the eve? Okay. Because what I want is I want to be able to go in the house and go to the bathroom, kitchen or whatever without walking in front of the screen or behind the screen. So it's like you go out the back door, there's the deck, you go down the deck and there'll be my garden. And then at the end of the garden, before the other property where the trees are, screen, seats, garden, and then the house. What kind of seats? Just like cheap lawn chairs? Or are you talking like brick thrones of cinder block and yeah. death? Well, maybe that. But, you know, whatever. People can bring blankets or chairs or, you know, whatever. I could set that with my stationary bike. Watch the movie. Let's watch Wizard of Oz. Uh, it's not a stationary bike. It's an uncomfortable chair. Well, whatever. Exo chair. <laughs> Grandma haunting the house? Wait, that's a different kind of exo chair. Never mind. But I think it would be really nice. So like in the summer out there and then all the, the berry bushes and and fruit trees so you could just pick your snacks and then sit down and watch the movie and a sink because just picking fruit in the dark and eating it leads to crunchy bug treats whatever and it's also crunchy. keep in mind with an outdoor theater in the summertime there are things called mosquitoes you know what you said what would i like you didn't say Everybody it would be feasible I'm just wondering what happens when we, 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 we live in the country and we literally have like six inch wingspan moths out there. And, and <laughs> I'm just imagining that right up on the projector or the TV screen. It's just like, I'm done. Mothra is here. We're just changing it to Godzilla again. <laughs> Hoping it gets rid of them this time. It's a... What about you, Aaron? Would you ever like a backyard theater? It's one of those things that sounds good on paper, but isn't necessarily good, like waterbeds. I, I, I grew up with waterbeds. I kind of like them. No. No, I don't. No, no, you're wrong, sir. I'm wrong. <laughs> I don't like No, no, a, a waterbed seems great until something happens, and it is no longer a waterbed, but a deflated bed. And then you've got to deal with all the water or the heater goes out yeah 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 yeah. Uh, see andrea's on board she just hates water okay and what is the major feature of a waterbed i do not want to sleep in water okay that's horrible what would you like to do i mean look water? look what it did for uh for ben affleck and daredevil crappiest movie ever was there a waterbed involved in his he had a, uh, he, he had a freaking uh, a sense deprivation cell, which was basically him floating in water. That is very different from a waterbed, sir. How? It, you're sleeping in it, it's bed, yeah, and it's no, water. No! It, it, you, if, you're, yeah. if you're immersed in water when you get in your waterbed, you have done something horribly wrong along the way. Which is my underlying point, sir. <laughs> How does this relate to movies and movie huh? theaters? 
let's go back to that just for a couple <laughs> minutes. Then we'll do the wrap up here. Um, so going back to the original thing, regular theaters, drive-in theaters, home movies. Wait, home movies are a different topic. Never mind. Home theaters. <laughs> You look at not necessarily. Nudge, nudge. What's that, Aaron? It's not necessarily. I mean, it looks so much bigger on the big screen. <laughs> wow, it's like it's a it metric. Go 3D. <laughs> <laughs> wow, they went 3D. It's like it's coming right at you. Uh, <laughs> ow, my eye, it burns. No, they went metric. In metric, almost every man is in the double digits. One would hope. Mm. <laughs> uh, any jokes beyond that <laughs> they become ethnic and thus offensive moving on from Asia um, let's go back to the topic um, <laughs> yeah I, I have no idea where I was we got about two more minutes and we're going to do the wrap up and call it done for this episode Here's what I'm going to tell you is movies are made in my world, in my head, for an experience. That experience might be seeing something you couldn't normally see, experiencing a story that you might not normally be able to experience, or bringing people together to enjoy this spectacle. Whether you're going out to a movie theater itself and enjoying an evening out and an experience together or whether you're going to <laughs> where to win in chat says uh, much like a movie in a theater a live podcast can't be paused while going to make a bowl of ice cream no but you can bring your damn machine with you so we, we get ice cream too what kind of ice cream did we get um so anyhow um drive-in theaters worth the experience because that is an experience in itself or a home theater where you create the perfect atmosphere for you individualized to you whether it's indoors outdoors surround sound headsets uh, speaker chairs whatever movies well any kind of theater was made to bring people together for an experience and making it your own experience is very important especially so it can include the people around you Aaron any closing thoughts Aaron no I'm good okay. Bye. <laughs> it's because it's a podcast I often insist on audio input instead of just head nodding or shaking um, Andrea unless something rattles oh, well. um yeah, movies are great. I like to watch them. I don't know. That's. I, I'm just reading weird when the um, thing about ice cream, chocolate ginger with fried apples over the top. You know what? Those three things separately sound awesome. Together? I'd I, still try it. I'm guessing he's in therapy, but I'm, I'm not really sure. It's uh Okay. So let's wrap this up. Let's do this. Uh, we had a few other things. I want to thank Pepper Garden for those bits that he cheered, as well as the other folks who showed some love. First and foremost, just by showing up, guys, thank you to all the subscribers that showed up. I almost almost at my yearly subscriber goal. For those of you that aren't subscribers that hung out in the live chat, unable to chat, thank you so much for hanging out. For those of you listening on the podcast and supporting it by sharing it with your friends and sending it off to your relatives that you hate and want to offend, here's to you, you you damn motherfuckers. You're incredible. Um, we are seeing quite the uptick in our support in these matters of offending your relatives and friends or co-workers that you hate. Thank you for that, guys. We really appreciate that. Um, I also want to say thank you for all the bits, all the follows, all the subscriptions, all the hosts that everybody did along the way here. Incredible support from Sadaru and Erstein Studios and all that. 
Also want to make sure I throw some love out to my Patreon folks who support Talk of the Tavern and our other podcasts such as Right Night and Skilling Survival every month. Triple U and Ethan Strauss immediately come to mind. Also keep in mind you can email us at Talk of the Tavern Show. That's Talk of the Tavern Show at gmail.com. If you'd like us to read birthday wishes or personal messages or just thoughts on the previous episode that you listened to on the podcast. And, uh, okay, I think that's pretty much it. I'm going to wrap this up, do some outro. Any closing thoughts or anything you guys need to say? Nope. Bye. Bye. There we go. We're out of here, guys. Uh, Thanks for joining us in the discussion shenanigans tonight. You are the one thing that makes the show what it is. Don't forget to join us at the Tavern next week. Until then, have fun, keep learning, and be good to one another. Now, raise your glass in good cheer. Enjoy the small moments every day and steamy dreams every night. Dance, monkey! Dance! I'm a giraffe. Dance, giraffe! Dance!